Senator Sims. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President, and Happy New Parliamentary Year to you. I rise tonight to talk about a matter that will be of importance to all Australians who value equality and diversity. I refer to former Prime Minister Tony Abbott's decision to speak at an event hosted by the Gay Hate Group Alliance Defending Freedom in the United States last week. Madam Acting Deputy President, this was a brazen slap in the face to gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender Australians and their loved ones. Now, Mr Abbott might hold conservative views. His conservative views are well known. But he is no ordinary politician. He's a former Prime Minister of this country. And having held that important office, indeed the highest office in the land, he is considered an ambassador for our country. Like it or not, I have to say I don't like it, but that is the reality. And with that in mind, he should think very carefully about the causes with which he associates. And let's make no mistake, the Alliance Defending Freedom is no ordinary religious group. This is no ordinary organisation. It advocates for the criminalisation of homosexuality and the abolition of anti-discrimination laws that, that protect LGBTI people. It's a lunatic fringe organisation that promotes an agenda that ruins people's lives. That's a fact. The agenda of this organisation is life-destroying. That's the consequence of criminalising homosexuality, and we've seen the implications of that the world over. In this place last year, I spoke about the homophobia of the Australian Christian Lobby, an organisation that uses the Christian name to peddle lies, misinformation and hate speech. Well, the Alliance Defending Freedom is the ACL on steroids when it comes to peddling hate against the LGBTI community. It's the ACL on steroids when it comes to homophobia and when it comes to demonising innocent people. And despite professing to defend freedom, the focus of this organisation is on anything but. It's about restricting the rights and freedoms of LGBTI people. That's the focus of this radical fringe organisation. The Alliance Defending Freedom seeks to strong arm the judiciary in the United States so that it restricts the human rights of women and of LGBTI people. And according to the uh, online website The Conversation, it has more than 40 lawyers on staff and has trained more than 1,300 law students and has 1,700 practising lawyers. So it's a significant organisation, a large organisation. In 2003, it fought unsuccessfully for the rights of states in the US to criminalise gay sex, and it continues to campaign unsuccessfully in the United States against marriage equality. But I also want to point out that the um, reach of this organisation extends beyond the United States. This has a global influence and a global focus. There have been reports that this organisation has provided advice to supporters of Russia's anti-LGBTI legislation, anti-gay legislation in Russia that has had the most appalling human consequences. The terrible human rights abuse of the Russian regime and the terrible treatment of gay and lesbian people is well documented. In the country of Belize, I understand that the Alliance Defending Freedom has provided lawyers to advise an anti-gay coalition that helps to fight for that country's anti-homosexuality laws. And in Belize, uh, they have a law that's known as Section 53 that imposes a 10-year jail sentence for what's referred to as carnal intercourse against the order of nature, a 10-year jail sentence. So, Madam Acting Deputy President, this is an organisation that has some very sinister links, some very sinister links indeed. And this is an organisation that a former Prime Minister of this country thought it was appropriate to associate himself with. A former Prime Minister of this country courting this radical fringe organisation. What a slap in the face to LGBTI Australians and what a slap in the face to all people who value equality in our country. It's deplorable and, quite frankly, it's an embarrassment to our nation. By sharing the rostrum with these bigots and homophobes, Mr Abbott is legitimising their hateful agenda, legitimising hate speech, hate speech that ruins people's lives. 
Now, the former Prime Minister is uh, very fond of lecturing Australians on mainstream values. Well, he may well reflect on how many would share the views of the Alliance Defending Freedom. How many Australians would support the criminalisation of homosexuality, the criminalisation of gay sex? My home state of South Australia abolished that 40 years ago last year. But the kind of world this organisation wants to take us back to, that's the kind of world they want to take us back to. Back to uh, the dark ages with all the heartache and all the human misery that comes with that. And to see a former Prime Minister of our country courting such an organisation is an affront to all Australians. Madam Acting Deputy President, when it comes to combating homophobia, racism and sexism, we in public life have a responsibility to stand up and to speak out. We have a responsibility to lead by example. We have a responsibility to model appropriate behaviour. And by doing that, we can help to change the culture of our country. This is the test of leadership that Mr Abbott has failed time and time again. After all, as opposition leader, he thought it was appropriate to stand in front of a placard that described former Prime Minister Julia Gillard in the most sexist and degrading terms. And now he's at it again, going to the United States, associating himself with the lunatic fringe. What's next for his visit to the United States? Maybe a joint press conference with Donald Trump and Sarah Palin? They certainly seem to be promoting the same kind of uh, brand of ugly and divisive politics. And uh, I note today that Mr Trump's political career has fallen quite flat, maybe uh, following the Tony Abbott trajectory. In the speech Mr Abbott gave to this uh, hate group, he said that it's time for common sense to prevail. He said we need less ideology and more common sense. Well, isn't that rich? If only he would follow his own advice. This is a man who has made a political career out of imposing his radical agenda on Australia. And let's face it, this is a politician who is so conservative he makes John Howard look like Karl Marx. He is so conservative he makes John Howard look like Karl Marx and it's time for him to put his radical ideology aside and to stop fanning the flames of ugly division in this country. And let me say, on the topic of common sense, it is time for Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull to show some leadership on this issue. He needs to call Tony Abbott out for his bigotry. Apparently, the ex-Prime Minister is free to talk to whoever he wants and say whatever he wants. Mr Turnbull just shrugs his shoulders and says it's Mr Abbott's right as an MP. It's his right to say whatever he wants and to talk to whatever right-wing, uh, conservative, lunatic fringe organisation he wants. Well, what about the rights of the LGBTI community? What about the impact that this has on our national reputation? What does it say about the government of this country when you have one of its key figures behaving in this manner? What does it say when you have a former leader of the Liberal Party, a former Prime Minister of this country, jetting off overseas and courting bigots and homophobes in the United States? What does it say about this Liberal government? Well, Mr Acting Deputy President, the Greens will always call out homophobia when we see it, and it is time for the leadership of this country to speak out and to do the same. Thank you, Senator.